So we are here for what would have been an in-person session at the MLA conference in 2020, um, all about communication. The sad thing is that an in-person thing, I think might have been a little more fun because I do have some, or I had planned some activities that are very difficult to do <laughs> online, but no matter. Um, I will start out, I am Pam Henley, one of the consulting librarians with the Montana State Library. And I thought it might be a good idea to have a session all about communication because so often when I'm out there working with libraries and library boards and staff, um, I kind of see that really communication is where some of these some of these issues come up. So I put together some some points about communication that you might find helpful. And I hope they are. So let's just start. When I come up with something, I turn to my friend Miriam Webster just for clarification about what we're talking about. So I thought I would put this up here for you. Um, communication is basically the process by which information is exchanged. And I think exchanged is a good word to remember there between individuals through a common system of symbols, signs, or behavior. So this brings in all sorts of things like symbols, you know, the little secret codes you and your friends might have come up with when you were little or secret messages you tried to write back and forth to each other because you developed your own little system. Um, behavior, you know, you have little, um, little actions you might make to somebody and then each of you knows what you're meaning, like even like a high five if you do a high five with someone, which we're not doing now because we're not shaking hands and touching, <laughs> um, you, have, you know what that means between the two of you. You've arranged something like that. Um, all the signs that we see out on the road, driving around, um, we all know what those mean. So that's the information and that's communication. And then I also came across communicating. Um, all of you grammar people who I'm not very good at, all those things. I think this is something like a transitive verb or an intransitive verb. I don't know what those are, but communicating is to transmit information, thought or feeling. So that's more than just information. It's other things like thoughts and feelings so that it is satisfactorily received. And I think the important thing there is satisfactorily because you might think that someone knows what you're thinking and you probably run into this at home all the time <laughs> of you have your angry face on and you don't know why your spouse or partner can't figure out what you're feeling um, there's a lack of communication there so that was not satisfactorily received or understood by the other person so that's what we're talking about today is exchanging information transmitting everything thoughts and feelings so that the other person can understand what you're talking about and so you can understand what someone else is trying to tell you. The interesting thing about communicating and communication, and you may already know some of this, but when you first see someone or first run into someone and trying to, you're going to start talking, 55% of what they're gonna hear is just visual. Body language, that first impression, you haven't even said anything, you haven't done anything, but already they've got a 55% of what you're going to present to them, they've already kind of made an impression of. Um, the rest, 38% would be your voice, whatever sounds coming out, and then 7% is only the content and the words. So only 7% of what you say is going to influence somebody's impression. And information. I thought that was pretty interesting that so much of it is already visual, which is why this is a difficult presentation today because I've lost that 55% just from not being in the same room with you. So hopefully we can still get some of this across. Hopefully the slides will provide some of the visual um, and it might actually be better because I tend to be one of those people that moves around and waves my arms and talks with my hands, which can be distracting. So you don't get to see any of that today. So I can be flailing my arms all over the place and hopefully you'll just get the information I'm presenting to you. But keep that in mind, 55% of what you're presenting is a visual thing. 
when you're talking to somebody. So today, what I want to at least give you some ideas to think about is are these three sections. I've broken it down into three topics, but really um, we're going to see how they all kind of build on each other and all relate to each other. So even though I've broken them down into three separate parts, mm, they, they're all going to relate back and forth. And I think you'll see that as we go through. So like I said, the 55% of body language of what you're how you're presenting and also what you're observing on somebody and these are skills that you can you can learn and practice and develop so keep in mind your body language and look at body language of other people then listening skills which is what we usually think of for communication and listening when I say listening I don't mean just you're hearing what someone says I mean you're listening to actually understand what they're saying because we've all We've all been there that someone's talking, you know, you're looking at your phone or you're looking at a magazine or you're doing something else. And yeah, you think you're hearing what they're saying. And <laughs> you may have had this where someone will stop and say, are you listening to me? And that would indicate that, first of all, okay, your body language is saying, no, you're probably not listening. At least they don't think you're listening. Um, and you're probably really not understanding what you're saying. What they are saying and trying to communicate to you. So listening skills are something we can work on quite a bit. And then the third part of communication would be the speaking, the vocal part. Um, and we can work on some skills there just because, and I feel like I'm in this position now because I want to talk so that there's not a lot of dead space in this presentation. But you probably know some people who just seem like they can talk and talk and talk all the time. Um, and when you stop and think about it, you sometimes find yourself thinking, what are they talking about? Or what are they trying to say? Because they'll just go on. Um, so what you say is pretty important also. And we'll talk about some of that too. So the three skills we're going to work on today, your body language, listening skills, and speaking stills. That's what I want you to be aware of today. So the first one, because that is the 55%, we're going to talk about body language. Um, Peter Drucker was a management consultant way back in the day. Um, he came up with the management by objectives theory and other things other theories out there, you can look him up. But I liked his quote about the most important thing is hearing what isn't said, because that's what we're talking about today. So in body language, it's important just to be aware of your posture. You might kind of be familiar with something called the power pose that Amy Cuddy came up with. You can look her up. She's got a really good YouTube video. Um, and I like to do that myself before a presentation. If you do this power pose, it, um, it gives you a little more confidence, um, makes you look a little more powerful. Um, it's like the Wonder Woman pose. And so it's a fun thing to do. But your posture is going to say to other people, are you looking confident? Do you know what you're talking about? That's what you're trying to present. And you also can be looking at the body language of the other person that you're going to be talking to. Are they doing the same thing? Are they looking confident? And then expressions on people's faces. That would be the other thing. And tone, which really is not so much in body language, but they go along together. Um, so you can just practice looking at someone and try to guess what they're thinking, what they're feeling. I like to do that a lot when you're out somewhere um, and other in, in the real world when we're back to traveling and doing things. If you're, if you're sitting in like the airport waiting area, waiting to get on your flight, look around at other people and just kind of in your mind, imagine, I wonder what they're thinking just based on their body language, their posture. It's fun to do that and you can practice, but then you are not really going to know, you know, if you're right or not, but you can just get some ideas. 
it's a good thing to practice. So keep in mind your body language. That's the point of all of this. I just had to put that picture up there because I think it's just a cute little, I'm assuming it's a little boy because I had boys, but he's so cute. It could be a girl. I'm not going to make assumptions too much. You can imagine whatever you want, but I thought that was a cute picture. Um, so in, in our body language discussion, I want to get into mirroring because that's a pretty good skill to be aware of. When you're trying to communicate with someone, um, you want to develop this empathy and a connection that creates the connection and mirroring can help you do that. It helps you focus on the other person, um, their needs, their viewpoint. So you kind of step out of your shoes and try to guess what, where they're coming from, what's their point of view. Um, and that's, that really does start to help that connection and opens up the communication early on before you've even said anything. If you can develop this kind of communication or this relationship with someone, this connection, you're already halfway there to doing some communication and some productive communication. Um, you might, when I was reading about this, I thought, oh, this reminds me back of when we were kids, and I think maybe my brother probably did it more than I did, but you know, and maybe you've seen kids do this, where they'll start copying the other person's actions, and mostly, I think my brother and I did it to annoy each other, but in in the adult world, it's actually a little good good practice to kind of be aware of. Um, really good salespeople will do something like this. If you're ever able to, you know, watch good salespeople when they're talking to someone, they will mirror the actions of the person they're trying to interact with, and that forms a relationship. And then, you know, there's just a better connection there, and more receptive interactions between people. So mirroring is something to be aware of. The first place I heard about mirroring was in a customer service oh, session ages ago. And it really, it really um, illustrated to me how important this can be. So for example, um, if you're you know, in your library and it's and I think we've probably all been here, five minutes before closing, someone comes rushing in because they have this urgent request and they've got to get this book or they've got to get this piece of information. My first reaction always was, oh, okay, let's just calm down. Let's slow down. Let's think about what we're looking for. And that is not very helpful because that person is already at a very elevated, agitated state and trying to slow them down is not going to work. What you want to do is try to match their energy level, their speaking speed. You want to meet them so that they feel connected to you instead of if you're trying to slow them down, that's kind of like putting up a barrier, putting up a wall, and it's not very productive. And I've I tried that a few times when someone would come in and say, oh my gosh, I need this right away. If you could jump up and say, oh, let me help you, um, then you feel like you're, you've are you got a better connection and it really works well. You can think about this too if you've been on the other side of that where maybe you're, you know, you're at an airport and you're late for your flight and you run up to the ticket counter and you say, oh my gosh, I need to, I need to check in. If the ticket agent says, oh yeah, okay, let me help you and let me, let me find your flight and they're trying to slow you down. I mean, you can just imagine how frustrating you're going to feel. And so you see how that works. If on the other hand, they say, oh yeah, I see your flight is leaving in a few minutes. Let me help you. Then, then you already feel like, yeah, they're on your side and they're going to help you. So that's a really big thing to remember is try to match the energy of that person you're talking to, match their speaking speed. Um, it just makes a better connection. And someplace else that I've found this to be helpful, this is the anthropologist in me coming out now, that when you go to a new culture or a new situation that you have not been in before, if you can try some of this mirroring just by copying what other people around you are doing, 
then you start to feel that you fit in a little bit better and you don't feel so strange. And I've come across that several times in the places that I've traveled to. It's like, oh yeah, these people all behave this way. So if I copy that, um, then I feel like I'm already connected to some of these people, even though we're not trying to exchange any information. It's just, it makes you feel like you fit in a little bit better. So that's what mirroring is all about. And um, empathy is really helpful in communication. It just makes connections with people. So I also put up um, this thing about mirror new neurons because this is the scientific basis of all of this that mirror neurons in your brain fire when, when someone is acting or when you observe someone else performing an action. And they found this when they were studying monkeys. And I think it's pretty interesting. Um, and we learn through imitation in many cases and it's important for our social development so there's a lot of research about mirror neurons out there and if you're interested you might want to investigate a little bit farther um, i didn't bring a lot of the scientific side into this but just know that mirror neurons are a thing and they are part of our social development and help with the empathy side of communication I just thought they were pretty interesting. And then the other thing that I came across was this theory of mind. And these are all related. So if you're looking at someone, you can you get an idea of what their emotions are and you might even be able to kind of predict what they're going to do based on wh what you think they're feeling. And that's another part of empathy. And also part of understanding that just because we think something's going to happen in a specific situation, someone else might have a different viewpoint. So you get curious about the other person's viewpoint. And curiosity, you're going to see, is another thing that comes up later in communication. So these are some of the kind of scientific sides of communication that you have to get to a certain level of development before you have these like really young, young kids aren't going to understand that what they think isn't what the same thing that other people think. You have, you have to be a certain age and level of development before that happens. But it is important for communication where just because I think somebody should feel this way, they probably don't. They have their own perspective, their own viewpoint, their own personal experiences they're bringing to a situation, and we are all different. That's the important thing to remember too. So one thing that I wanted to, um, I would have had us do if we were in the same room together was um, an exercise all about mirroring where you would be in pairs and one person would do an action and you would um, you would mirror that action because then that causes you to have to observe somebody very closely and um, follow what they're doing. It's going to be difficult to do that online, so we will skip that one. But I did come up with the idea that, you know, in your spare time when you're <laughs> when you're bored, if you want to practice this of trying to mirror or try to understand what somebody is doing, you can put on a movie or watch something on TV and you have it muted so that you don't hear what they're saying and just try to guess of what are they talking about or what are they feeling? What are they trying to indicate based on their movements or their expressions or anything like that? Whatever, just what you see. Um, it's not like, it's not gonna be a great test because you're not going to know where you write, um, but you can, it helps you develop those observation skills of, oh, I see they're looking a little, you know, tight around the eyes and their expression looks a little whatever angry or sad or something and it helps you name emotions so that you're more aware 
of what people are trying to indicate. And a lot of this is so subconscious, you don't realize you're doing it. But if you start observing people, then you get a little clue as to what they're thinking before they even say anything. Um, you could try, you could use a YouTube video where you could stop it and decide what you think they're trying to indicate and then go back and play it with the volume on and see if you are right or not. But that would be an exercise you could do on your own because we can't do it in pairs in this session here. So that's the body language. Now we're going to move on to our listening skills. And I love this quote just because this is the introvert's dream. We have all trained for this. All of us introverts are just so happy to have someone say, you should listen more than you talk because that's what we do. So listening involves really trying to understand, not just waiting for that person to finish talking so that I can say something. It's trying to really hear what they're trying to communicate to you. The interesting thing about speech and listening is that your brain can think faster than people can speak. So someone is talking, but your brain is already racing through what you think they're going to say anyway, and you're trying to develop your response. So you're just waiting for them to finish, and then you're going to say all these thoughts that you have come up with. Um, that's not really good listening. You want to just wait and you want to focus on what they're saying and eliminate all those distractions. Like I was talking about earlier, you're not going to be flipping through your phone while someone is talking to you. You're not going to be flipping through a magazine while you're trying to listen to what someone says. Um, here's an exercise for you also that I thought this was great. When someone is talking to you and you're, he, they are trying to communicate something serious to you, um, to help you focus, just tell yourself, this is the most interesting person I have ever met. And you have to just trick yourself into believing that. But if you tell yourself that, this is the most interesting person I have ever met, what they're going to tell me is going to be so important. Um, you'll find that you actually do focus on what they're saying. So keep that in mind. The most interesting person you have ever met. So on those listening skills, we're going to talk about responsive listening. And I just thought this was another cute picture. This little person is clearly interested in whatever that dog might be trying to tell her. <laughs> I just love it. Um, so responsive listening involves admitting that you are ignorant about what someone is trying to tell you. You don't know what they're trying to tell you and you're curious about it. That will help you um, kind of investigate a little bit more, encourage the other person, ask questions to learn more and it goes then goes back to that theory of mind I was talking about earlier where you might have an impression uh, or an opinion of what they're talking about but if you are curious then you're willing to learn more from the other person and hear what the other person has to say and as Christine had I, in the chat I noticed earlier um, that was a great comment Christine was that you want to repeat back what you've what you think you heard um, just because you might have heard something might not really be what they were trying to say so by repeating it back paraphrasing it back that helps them see what you've heard and what they need to say differently to, so that you can understand it um, so this listening with ignorance and curiosity just leads to a better interaction because it encourages the other person and it leads to more back and forth dialogue. Um, curiosity then takes you a little more outward focus, not focusing on your own opinions, your own viewpoints. You want to be thinking about the other person's perspective, their viewpoint. 
um, being a little more flexible. This opens off flexibility for you that maybe you're not always, maybe your opinion is not always the exact correct one to have. Um, be open. And another scientific side of this is that they find that when you are a little more outward and you're a little more flexible and willing to accept other possibilities, it creates new pathways in the brain. And who doesn't want more new pathways in your brain? It's good for your brain to be flexible. So, and I, I still am thinking about this final sentence on this slide about you can't be curious and judgmental at the same time. I read it in one of the books that I read and I thought, oh yeah, that makes sense. But the more I thought about it, I thought, oh, I don't know. Somebody could probably argue that, that yeah, you could still be judgmental, but you still could be curious. I don't know. So I'm tossing that one out there for people to just think about. Um, but curiosity really is the way to go. Even if you do want to be, you can, maybe you can be judgmentally curious. I'm not sure. But judgmental is more of a uh, negative side and kind of closes doors and curious would then open the doors. And we want to be open to things in communication. I think that's one of the points here is that we need to be open and flexible. So when you're listening to someone, you want to just really um, square off with them, you know, face them, be, be facing them directly so that they have your attention, you're giving your full attention, you want to make eye contact so that they know you're listening. I mean, that's, we go back to the body language again. And you've probably heard this before too, that you want to nod. If someone is talking a lot, you want to nod a few times to encourage them to show that you're listening and you're hearing what they have to say. So that's part of listening is that body contact, body language of just really, really focusing on them. And don't try to interrupt them and con comment all the time. You need to wait until they're completely finished and listen for understanding instead of, oh yeah, I'm gonna answer back to this as soon as they're done talking. You wanna to try to understand what they're saying. So this is where, and this might be tricky, um, this is where I wanted to do a little exercise. So I guess my question is how many, does everybody have a microphone? Because if we don't have a microphone, it may not work so well. No, I mean, I don't know without everybody kind of trimming in and saying, right. yes, it looks yeah. like a lot of people do. Maybe do. Alana doesn't, but um, maybe she can, and Brenda, maybe they can chime in with chat. I see I there are some no's. Um, yeah, that's too bad. So I Give it don't, a try. Give it a I try. Don't, yeah, <laughs> I don't. Well, I think I'll divide into three groups. So if people without microphones end up in a group with another one, they can at least hear what the other people are doing. So Listening. let's try that. So I'm going to try the breakout rooms, and it will only take us like two minutes or so. And then we'll all be back um, in the session together. So what I want you to do, this is the exercise we're going to do. Um, I'm going to give you a sentence. And the pairs or you could probably use chat in the breakout rooms. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to give you a sentence and everybody's going to start with the same sentence. Then in your pairs, in your individual rooms, um, the other per one person is going to start with the sentence. The other person is going to use the last word of that sentence to start a new sentence and you're going to go back and forth. Then the first person is going to use the last word the other person has said in their sentence to start a new sentence and go back and forth. And we're only going to do this for about a minute. It's, um, don't feel like <laughs> we're going to have to do this forever. It sounds um, really fun though. <laughs> it is really fun. Yes. Um, all right. So, oops, let me, um, room. So, the sentence I'm giving to everybody is, today I'm going to the store to buy milk. So the first person will say, today I'm going to the store to buy milk. The next person will start their sentence with the word milk. Okay. All right, here you go. Milk. 
me. Zoom. Hello. Did people have a good time in their breakout rooms? I did join a room where I saw there was only one person, so Myra and I had a good time also. I had a good time. Okay. Did I was... Uh, we had a we we went back and forth. I don't know, ten or twelve times. Was oh great. yeah, we had like three or four, four or five. Okay, now I don't have a chat chat thing, but that's okay. You'll I'm have just... to click the box at the bottom to to bring that up oh, again. Chat. There we are. You're yeah, right. It says Della says they were fun. Um, Brenda oh, yeah. says great exercise. Raya, I was in a room by myself. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, sorry, Raya. Oh, no. I couldn't join everybody. That's too bad. Oh, I am sorry. It's okay. I'm, okay. I'm used to talking to myself by now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and still, you can, you know, you can try that with yourself. And just make Raya, a yes. and <laughs> she was social distancing in the breakout <laughs> room. <laughs> I'm sorry that not everybody could do that. But if we had been in a real room, we would have paired up and you would have had somebody. But the point of that was that you had to listen for the whole sentence before you could respond. And that was my point of doing that exercise. <laughs> okay, Not to make you go sit in a room by yourself. That was <laughs> not my point. <laughs> okay, so that was the listening exercise. And I, I hope you can do that when you're actually talking to somebody um, in your daily work. Just, just try to uh, listen until the very end. Um, that's the idea. So now we're on to speaking, which is this final, what did I say earlier? 7% of communication. So it's not very much, but think before you speak is something that we have said to people in our family quite a bit, and maybe you do the same thing. It's a good thing to keep in mind. Um, so the other thing to remember or to think about with speaking is to slow down, which is something I have to remind myself all the time. Slow down. Um, slow down your thinking and your speaking and stay focused, which also helps with your listening. So some the little mantra that you can tell yourself is to think breathe and then speak um, i know we're talking about breathing a lot these days of just breathe to calm down so think breathe and speak and like we have said a couple times earlier is reflect back to the other person what what you heard what you think they said and that gives feedback so that's part of the thinking and speaking again. Then just something to keep in mind. I couldn't really figure out a good place to put this in, so I'm just gonna put it in here now, is that how something communi is communicated is important. Uh, I think this might go along with what I said earlier of the people who can just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Um, it's more important to say the main point that you're trying to communicate first. Put that out there right up front and then add all the details. Um, instead of just talking, 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 saying everything you know, the, the main point gets lost in there. So you want to just put out the main point, the bottom line, put that out first. And then you can go into the details. All right, so speaking. Um, this one is like my favorite thing that I have learned over the past several years is yes and. And I know Joe um, will know all about this too because we learned this at a leadership institute. And, you know, I don't want to go overboard and say this can be a life changing thing for you, but it can really, um, really improve your communication and your outlook and the way you deal with people. Yes and. And if you're not familiar with yes and, it comes from the world of the improv um, things, which when I first heard this terrified me because I thought there's no way I know I can do any kind of improv things. That's scary. You have to be up on a stage and you have to make people laugh and you have to be on top of your game. And that was not me. But um, after I learned about it some more, I learned, no, it's really not that at all. It's you're listening and you're giving your full attention and you're accepting what people are saying to you and then you're building on it and making an offer back of what they are talking about and you're working together to communicate, build a bridge, um, and focus on a common goal. 
So the reason I'm really talking about yes and today and the world of improv is because things to be successful in there, if you think about any kind of improv thing that you have looked at, um, for it to be successful, it involves the skills of communication and collaboration and creativity. And when I read that, I thought, well, that sounds like that's going to work everywhere. Certainly, that's what our libraries are trying to do when you're working with your board or your patrons, your community. Um, to be successful, you need to have communication, collaboration, and creativity. Um, so the really essential skills um, in the world of improv and I think in life too, would be involving a willingness to listen, which is what we've talked about today. Trust, which comes into the yes and section. Taking risks, um, being able to adapt to change, and staying positive in adversity. And I think that kind of covers life, but certainly is really applicable in the library world today and other times you want to be positive in adversity because there's always adversity coming along you want to be able to adapt when things come along for change you do need to be able to take risks and you need to have some trust in your community your board your staff there needs to be trust involved and you need to be able to listen which is what we're talking about today Life, as we know, doesn't follow any kind of a script. Um, so that's where improv skills come in pretty handy. You need to be able to be flexible and adapt to whatever comes along and improvise so that you can be successful. So that's why I believe that yes and skills, um, if you can work on those, can really help you in all parts of your life. So let's talk a little bit about these little words. Yes, when you say yes to what someone has said to you, it's, it shows that you're listening, you're actually present in the conversation, in the situation, and you're trying to understand, you're making the effort to understand. So when someone says something, you say yes. But then if you say and, and I know for most of us, the first response is when everyone, anyone proposes something, it's yes, but what about this? But what about this? We want to eliminate that. We want to say yes and so that it shows, sure, I've heard what you say and we can work together to build something. We can cross the bridge. I can make an offer back to you that we can build on together. So part of the scary part of it is that you have to give up a little control. You know, I want to control the way this goes, but I'm going to have to let that go. I'm going to have to think maybe there's another way to think about it, which goes back to the whole theory of mind that we talked about earlier of being open to the other person's perspective and be willing to think about that. So that all comes back together. So it opens communication when you say and and then you're going to trust that the other person is also going to build on what you're saying and come back with another offer we always talk about everything as an offer um, that they've said something you've accepted it and you're going back and building on it and then they're building back it's just like the last word exercise we just did, um, the sentence where you had to build on the last word, going back and forth, it leads into this of just building on what the other person says. So you're going to be noticing, you know, their response, building on what they said, and again, not being judgmental. You might think it's a crazy idea, but and sometimes like brainstorming, we always talk about, you know, there's no crazy ideas. You just throw everything out there and maybe you can build on something. This is the same idea that you're going to be open and see what you can work on together. That's why I love yes and. To me, it has been really helpful in communication. So some things that I couldn't put anywhere else in here, so I just put them on one slide so we can talk about all of these. Um, everything, when we're talking about communication, everything is an offer. You can either be open to it or you can 
say no or but and just block it all off. It shuts the door and then communication has stopped. So I think we want to try to be more accepting and open. You're trying to focus on the goal of where things were going to go. Maybe, and I can't off the top of my head think of things um, to give examples of everything, but you have some kind of common goal that you're going to be working towards. That's what you want to focus on instead of the specific individual things that might come up. You're a lot of times, you know, creating something out of nothing, but that's what the brainstorming and collaboration is all about that you're going to work together and come up with an idea that's going to work the unconditionally constructive i thought was fun that you know just throw every idea out there and see what what works and what comes together especially in a group discussion you know everybody might have some idea that at first is going to sound crazy but when you're open and you think about it some more a lot of times things come together and they build and it, it actually leads to something really, really useful. Uh, the important thing is asking questions without being judgmental. And that's a lot of times um, hard to do because we just, we just say, you know, why would you want to do it that way instead of, oh, that's an interesting thought. And mostly it's just the words you use and sometimes tone because <laughs> I put this down farther. You know, we have a saying in our family that, oh, tone, tone, tone. Um, the words might be okay, but the tone indicates something totally different. Um, so be aware of your tone. I like the be persistent when trying to find the bridge or connection. And this goes back to my anthropology days also. There, And I can't remember the specific society, but there are some um, societies you know, they call it, you might call them Aboriginal societies, maybe Australia, maybe Africa. But when two people would meet each other, you know, along the trail, they had to sit down and find some kind of connection that they shared, you know, otherwise one of them was obligated to kill the other one. That was just how their society was set. So they would sit down and go back through their family history, and it could be ages and generations back, but if they could find a common relative, then they were related and then it was okay for them to talk. Um, so that's the persistent part. They might have had to come go way, way, way back to relatives, but they would work to find it. So that's the same thing I'm saying to you is just be persistent, um, trying to find a connection with someone or bridge to work together. And even though it's difficult in these kind of online video webinar things, um, silence is okay. It's okay to just wait and pause and think. You don't have to fill every second with noise and words. It's okay. That's where you have the time to take that breath before you think, before you speak. Those are my other final thoughts. So. To the end, the points I wanted you to go away with is body language is 55% of your initial communication. And keep in mind the mirroring, the empathy, the matching the other person's pace and level and tone, that's going to go a long way to at least beginning to open up communication. And for listening, wait for the speaker to finish and then be curious and focus. Those are the important things there. And then when you finally do get to speaking, think and then breathe and go along with the non-judgmental questions and paraphrase what you heard, which we've talked about too. Okay, that was pretty much everything I wanted to say. I did want to put out this slide of the resources that I read. These are some great books. Um, if you want to do a little more investigating into this, um, there are really good stuff in all of these books. So can, you, I'll put this can you copy and put those in the chat box? Oh, I don't know. It would be nice if I had links to all of them. Wouldn't that be great? Oh, there. these are librarians. They can Oopsie. find them. Yes, they can. Of course, now I'm sorry that I um, 
okay, there you go. You could you could write them down. I could um, send a list out. Send them to me, and I will okay. put them in with the um, with the video that I post to Vimeo this afternoon. So okay, the the list of these. Mm -hmm. I'll right. add it to the description. I will do that because yeah, they were great. They were very helpful. Um, all sorts of good information in all of these. All right, that was that was the session. Ta -da. And the yes and, I thank you for bringing that up. That is one of my favorite things I've learned. I agree. That was library trainings over the years. Yeah, I have learned so much from that and used it so often that it really does kind of change your perspective and really is very helpful. So I'm a big proponent of yes and all the time. I'm so glad people enjoyed it. And you're going to post this um, Vimeo. Are you still recording? Yeah, I okay. am. I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording in a moment. Um, I just want to point out that it's actually going to be posted. We have a um, channel for MLA. So there's a new channel for that. So um, watch for a, a link from Debbie. She'll be posting that out. Excellent. Thank you, Pam. I'm going to stop our recording now and we can... Uh, those of you who are still online, stay here. We can continue the conversation for a little bit.